first tonight, a News 12 exclusive. An acidic teenager from the village of News Square shares his story of abuse and betrayal. He was sexually abused by a trusted teacher and then was shunned by his community as he tried to get justice. News 12's Tara Rosenblum has his heart-wrenching story tonight in her special report, Broken Trust. Tara. And Janine, the teen you're about to meet is the first sex abuse victim from New Square to ever seek justice from the courts. And he spoke to us at great personal risk because exposing secrets in the Hasidic world can come at great expense. But Yossi, who asked us to only use his first name, is speaking out anyway, hoping other victims of abuse will come forward. Just a stone's throw from the Hudson in the heart of rural Rockland County. It's a tiny town that is arguably one of the most religious, most insular, places in all of America. I love to live here. It's very quiet, only Jews. In New Square, the signs are in Hebrew. The women are forbidden to drive, and the Torah dominates every aspect of life. And for the most part, there's a shroud of secrecy that surrounds the ultra-Orthodox Jewish families who live here. Many of them don't trust the outside world, so they keep to themselves. But for one teen, all that isolation allowed for a dark secret that nearly destroyed him. I used to be a happy, you know, happy child, happy teenager. But since the abuse, so it's just, I'm, I'm a different person. In the eyes of his religious leaders, sharing the story you're about to hear is considered a sin. But Yossi is determined to see that no other child suffers the way he did. And even if it can help one victim, you know, in any way to get better and come forward, you know, I think, I think it's worth it. Yossi's loss of innocence came at age 15, shortly after he dropped out of religious school. Hoping to get him back on track, his family enlisted the help of Herschel Taubenfeld, a jovial, well-respected and connected teacher known for having a way with kids. And at first, it seemed like a perfect fit. When you leave from the Hasidic lifestyle, you lose a lot. You lose friends and some support of family and just had an, you know, a listening ear. And so Yossi suspected little when lessons at Taubenfeld's house took a very unconventional turn. He told me that he has the, the ability to read the palm of my hands and you know, I was fascinated. So I told him, go ahead, you know, tell me. But soon Yossi's life coach started to read other parts of his body. Every time he dared to touch more sensitive parts of my body and private parts, until he covered my entire body and, you know, was... Until it became the norm to do it all. That ritualistic abuse, Yossi says, dragged on three times a week for four agonizing months, each time Taubenfeld ordering him to stay silent. I was thinking that, you know, maybe it's abuse, but then I was, I was just pushing away those thoughts. Mainly because coming forward was too scary. Others who had reported abuse were socially ostracized, kicked out of schools, and in some cases, their family businesses were even boycotted. But eventually, Yossi's pain became more powerful than his fear. In a way, it may even be worse than killing someone physically because you stay with the memories, you live with it, you know, it becomes a part of you. And so Yossi turned to the people he trusted the most for help, the head rabbis of New Square, who had just set up their own sex crimes unit called the VOD. So the VOD told him that, you know, you got to go for help. Therapy, that's it. So two months later, Yossi would sum up the courage to do something no one else has dared to do in the history of New Square. He reported the abuse to Ramapo police. I just decided, you know, enough is enough. I'm not going to just let him go away with it and feel guilty for the rest of my life for not doing anything. But the fallout was immediate. Other friends and stopped even talking to me, you know, even greeting me on the street. They just walk right by and, you know, as if I don't exist. 
Still, Yossi pressed on, even helping his investigators secure this stunning taped confession. In Yiddish, Yossi says his attacker tearfully fessed up to the heinous crimes. But when word of his impending arrest got out, Yossi claims religious leaders staged a cover-up of epic proportions, sending Taubenfeld to Israel to obtain, of all things, this prestigious license to become a rabbi and offering Yossi a hundred grand in hush money. I refused it. I'm, I'm not, you know, selling myself for money. I believe I'm worth more than that. By December 2011, just one month after Yossi reported the abuse, Taubenfeld turned himself in. He was charged with 30 misdemeanor counts of forcible touching, endangering the welfare of a child, and third-degree sex abuse, signaling the first prosecution of a pedophile from New Square. But this trailblazing case would come to an unexpected end never making it to trial. Instead, the teacher turned rabbi, turned convicted pedophile, avoided jail time in exchange for six years probation. It's like a slap in the face, you know. It's like everything I've worked for for months just, you know, was in vain, you know. I just wanted him to get what, you know, he deserved. I was very disappointed. The reaction of many victims in New Square was absolute outrage. Rabbi Nosen Leiter of Muncie followed the case closely and believes Taubenfeld got a sweetheart plea deal that will discourage other victims to come forward. It was uh, a miscarriage of justice to the nth degree. The judge, by letting off Taubenfeld, sent a message to any other victim of Taubenfeld or anyone else that you, if you decide to go up against the establishment, so to speak, and risk everything you have, we will not back you. Rockland's district attorney, Tom Zugaby. Some people have accused your office of going soft on Mr. Taubenfeld, of offering him a sweetheart deal. How do you respond to that criticism? The sentence in this case was appropriate based on the facts, and the judge imposed a probationary sentence instead of jail time um, on our recommendation because that was the appropriate way to keep control over this individual for the next six years. This is the first case I know of that was prosecuted fully within the community and a just result was reached. This was trailblazing. And we're optimistic you're going to see more and more of these type of cases come to light. In fact, Yossi claims his attacker is still free to ruin more innocent lives. Is Mr. Taubenfeld still here at the yeah, issue? Yes. yes. Incredibly, multiple students told us Taubenfeld remains in the classroom at one of New Square's biggest religious schools. Very nice. He's the best. We're looking for the head of the yeshiva? We're just looking for the principal. Instead of answering our questions about whether a pedophile is in fact employed here, school leaders called the police. But outside, we found no shortage of people willing to come to Taubenfeld's defense. I don't consider him as guilty. I think he was unfairly targeted. And we got the same reaction when we went to Taubenfeld's home. Mr. Taubenfeld, do you have anything to say? The convicted sex offender refused to speak with us, but his neighbors offered plenty. Do you feel safe with your kids outside his yard knowing he's a registered sex offender? I mean, I know him. He's a very nice man. But despite it all, Yossi remains defiant and hopeful. Other victims watching this story will find the courage to speak out, just like he did. Don't blame yourself for whatever happened to you. If you find the courage to come forward, you should definitely go all the way and make sure justice has been served. And while Yossi says he was disappointed with the outcome of his case, he had nothing but high praise for the detectives of the Ramapo Police Department, who he has, says worked tirelessly to prosecute his abuser. Yossi, meanwhile himself, is still living with his parents in New Square, just half a mile from when the man who was convicted of molesting him is reportedly still teaching other yeshiva students. Mm -hmm. Scott and Jean. Tara, what happens at this point if others now come forward after seeing Yossi's story, particularly with the same uh, abuser, alleged abuser? District Attorney Tom Zugaby told us that his office will vigorously pursue any future sex abuse claims related to this case or any other in New Square. But clearly what Yossi is hoping is that if another victim were to come forward, that his attacker would be forced to 
finally and eventually spend some time behind bars. It's rare that something happens just once. Hopefully someone will yes. come forward. Yes. All right.